Here is a showcase of Manhattan next to Central Park in version 10 spoilers. The frame rate is going to be bad on this one, but I just wanted to show the singular architecture here. Is this uh, beautiful? Is this what we call a great view? Let's go down here. Is this a great view? Sure, you get the Central Park here, but what's more beautiful, this or this, where you can see people just enjoying life within the greenery and having all of this available to the artistic council, to businesses, to everything. It's so much potential here. And look at these walkways. You have these beautiful walkways going across the whole thing. You could just spend an afternoon walking along these pathways and just enjoying the sights and sounds of the rooftop of Arcology. And then you compare this, and this is just a tiny bit of architectural uh, style that we could have. This is this is nothing compared to what it could look like artistically in uh, 10 years. I'm also limited by polygon count <laughs> with what I'm trying to do here. So, like, you have to remember, I have polygon a polygon budget with what I can show and what I can really uh, showcase. So let's go back to, I'm just giving, giving you a taste of the modular aspects of it. This is unfinished over here, but we're going to go back to the singular architecture, what everyone's used to, and you have this. That's the alternative. And the roads just go and go and go. You have your side roads. Side roads, always cars, always sidewalks going in straight lines, cars going in straight lines. The buildings just go straight up. There's no connectivity between the buildings. All of the buildings are isolated. All of the buildings are singular. Look at these roofs. These rooftops have like HVAC systems on them. No greenery. No utility. You have these. Uh, here's a construction site it looks like based on this texture. <laughs> you have these older buildings that are just waiting to be knocked down. And, and then once you knock down this building, what? You have access to such a small plot of land. And then since your plot of land is so small, you get monstrosities like this. <laughs> like, look at this. Look at how disorganized it is and how chaotic it is. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? And then heating these buildings is a nightmare too because they're like giant heat sinks sticking into the sky. And the cold winds just zoom by and take away all of that heat. But I mean, I think the, the lack of utilization of space is what really gets me. It's not even, um, not even so much the utilities. The utilities are an afterthought. And the noise, too, of all of the roads. All of the airspace above the roads. The fact that traffic can be uh, one-tenth of what it is. Since uh, version 10 is even taller, the traffic gets reduced even more. So the traffic is one-tenth in this green, lush city. It has one-tenth of the traffic. And then you can have things like this. Spoiler alert. <laughs> There's actually a building pop sticking up through it. But look at that.
the contrast really is shocking. Look at this color, the gray versus the green, the gray versus the green. And it might not be quite this green in reality, but it would be pretty close. So this is the closest that singular architecture can come to arcology. Is something like this and then you have this in the back so have balcony here balcony here more than a balcony I would say but around here in the front it's this right here so that that's that's about the best they can do and look at this footprint of land you needed all of that land available pulling off that much land, a plot that large, this close to Central Park, is mind-numbingly expensive. That's why you see these uh, spires. That's why you see this happening. You have, you know, your six-story building here, and then right across the street is a 75-story building because it's so difficult to get the land. And if it's so difficult to get the land, then it's so difficult to get the airspace. And in modular arcology, that's not the case because you can keep building up and you can keep building sideways. So all of this property is available. Keep in mind, this isn't finished yet. It's under construction. All of that gray is not finished. <laughs> I hope you made that assumption. But all of this is available all of that and you can build anywhere you want within that structure and look at how gorgeous it is here's the <laughs> you can jump in here take a swim in the uh, water tower you can view the football game from the water tower. Now that is pretty nice. Though these, these are things you just simply can't do in New York City. Watch a football game while swimming in a water tower. So there's just so much fun with the modular city. There's so much... Um, so many features. So many... Um, beautiful beautiful little golden nuggets to enjoy and once again when you go over here into the gray the concrete jungle this is the best you can do this is the best there is once again think of that contrast the contrast between the two is very stark. And this is the highest value land like in the world, Manhattan, right next to the Central Park. So if, if this is the most valuable land in the world, then what does it say about the potential of arcology? What does it say about the value, the potential value of arcology? I mean, look at this. Compare this to what you, I was just flying over. Which one is really a better city? Which one is really a better city design? All of these singular buildings with their singular rooftops and their singular roads versus the module, the 3D module. Now we're back to the modular. And look at this difference. Anyway, <clears throat> that's it for this one. And remember, a single arcology is more powerful than 1,000 skyscrapers.